Okay, my good friends, this is going to be a shocker, but it's true. We're going to be going into Antron Petrov's research about the tiniest particles there are and fission and fusion and so forth in a second. But this is fission and this is fusion. And these are the muon neutrinos, the black one, the ball, and the electron neutrino, which turns into a shower. But it was a white ball as well, black and a white ball. Let me show you that, and then I'm going to show you what they have to say at the particle accelerator places. Because the neutrino is the smallest thing to exist. And we're going to go to the definitions and so forth in a second. But Fermilab has seen this black particle and this white glowy one, or red glowy one. We have found exact same particles, but we did it with light using photons of light and lasers, which Anton will be explaining in a moment. Now, when we saw these particles manifest just before hitting a little device that we created called a Venturi, which is right here, those particles which were attached together, the black and white, which they found at Fermilab and we found, the reason they see them is because they smash things head on. Boom! And they see all kinds of debris. We squirted it through the Venturi using light only, not big protons. We use only light, which is, starts out at the smallest particles there are. So we accelerated the light. Now they say you can't accelerate light. I say yes you can. However, at this point, it stacks up at the Venturi and it starts to slow down. It's bam, 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 bam. It's banging into each other because they can't get through that Venturi. And the black particles, which you see here, the fixed particle as they call it at, at Fermilab, forces the white ones to squirt through. And then somehow there's more black ones that must be over here. I don't think these are jumping ahead to get in. But the white ones find new black ones to attach to. How that happens, I cannot exactly say. But I can say this for certain. Just as Fermilab says, these are the muon neutrinos, electron neutrinos. Black ones and the white ones. The white ones turn into showers. The black ones go into sterile mode. That's what we found. Now, I just showed you the particles. These are the ones that Fermilab says are the tiniest little particles they can find. And that one there is the fixed particle, and that one's a little squishy one, which is the glowy one that can get bigger and smaller. I just showed you these. And then he goes on to talk about uh, the standard model, which does not work. I'll, I'm, we're going to get a little deeper into this in a second. Okay, my friends, this is starting to get exciting. This is a video by Anton Petrov, fabulous guy, very intelligent, talking about groundbreaking particle accelerator use nothing but light to reach insane speeds. This is what we did. The only thing they're missing here is the Venturi. Let me show you. This is what they need. They need to put a Venturi in just like this, exactly the way we did it. All right, and, then, and I will show you, we can separate these particles, the black and the white, and only the white can get through, the black can't get through, which is the muon neutrino. I'll show you ours, and this is exactly what they have to do, is put the accelerator in there, and then they'll be good golden. You know, I find this extremely interesting, because this is what I talked to CERN about, or at the University of Geneva, about this luminosity that we could see, and here now they're talking about what is luminosity, why high luminosity, how will high luminosity make the LHC work? Well, what they did was they put in this more powerful focusing magnets and new optics. This is here, right? New, more powerful superconducting quadrupole magnets installed on either side to focus the particle bunches before they meet. That's the key. They had to focus them. Okay, my friends, I want you to remember one quick thing here. We're talking about high luminosity upgrade at the LHC Large, Large Hadron Collider. Now, we also have a particle accelerator as well. And why can I say I have a particle accelerator just as good as CERN? Because it's luminosity. It says luminosity is the number of potential collisions per surface unit over a given period of time. 
It's an essential indicator of an accelerator's performance. We have luminosity coming out of your eyeballs. This is how they show their performance from CERN and Fermilab is these particles. We see these particles from light, but then we accelerate them. Just like they said, your particle accelerator, luminosity is the function of performance. It started like this. We added no additional energy whatsoever other than a Venturi, and we ended up with this luminosity. That is a very, very highly functioning particle accelerator. Not only that, it split the particles and then fused them back together. That's fission and fusion. And right in here, we should be able to harvest something. Okay, Anton is going to say that light lacks, acts kind of like a fluid when you split up the particles. It's possible to manipulate this plasma by sending it's various plasma. electrical fields through it. But it also becomes possible to create various types of waves here by creating different types of charge separation. Or charge separation, remember that. Essentially separating the negative and positive charges, which in essence starts producing something equivalent to waves inside the plasma itself. And so understanding that you can actually... Alright, this is basically what, what we did, only they don't have a Venturi. They're just doing it in, in a... a and create waves inside plasma. The scientists can then try to manipulate it to create that wake field effect. And they can do so very effectively by using a very specifically shaped laser. Or by using an appropriately shaped pulse of laser. This is basically what they're doing, only we have the Venturi, so all of these fields have to get together and go through that Venturi. And only the tiniest particles, the white ones, are allowed through, because the other ones are fixed, just like Jeremy Lab is saying. I agree 100%. All right, I just want to make you understand, I've been in this a very long time. I was in the Army in 1968, and I, was, I worked on Nike Hercules missiles, um, servicing them up in Alaska. And um, I went deep into electron, I mean deep, 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 as deep as you can get. And at this time, I was fully aware that there was nothing but dipoles. I mean, this, this is a long time ago. And I said there's only two types of intermolecular forces, and they are dipole-dipole interactions. And there's polar and there's nonpolar. And this is still always bothers me. <laughs> Why is iron and so forth become a polar molecule, possibly, like a magnet? Whereas I can't make this rock here magnetized, basically. And you know, there's, there's differences in materials, the, the matter, at certain sizes, like copper. Copper is extremely conductive. Why? It's a certain size of electrons has this huge field of electrons around it, which makes copper so conductive. And iron, you can drag different potentials and leave them where everything else, you can't drag those potentials around. They're pretty well locked in. Why is iron? You know, anyway, this is, this, all this stuff intrigues me. So anyway, I, I came up with the theory that the transfer of energy is from light, which is atomic vapor. Everything there is, every, all energy there is, comes from light. And it is atomic vapor. That atomic vapor it's eaten by plants and grows food. We eat the plants, so we have eaten that atomic vapor. That atomic vapor creates heat, it creates light, it creates life. And I mean, I went through everything. There's nothing I didn't go through. And all into the chemistry, chemical, electrostatical forces, all the chemistry, periodicity. I mean, energies of bonding, non-bonding. I mean, you, you want to get deep? Well, I got deep. And so, I presented this as a theory to my professor, and I was so freaking slapped that I realized, and nobody would come to my aid, so I said, well, I went into electronics, and I started my own business, and I did fine. But this was known 50 years ago. All right, don't forget now. Like I said, I have been looking for these particles knowing that everything is a dipole. That means light has to be a dipole. 
if particle, everything is a dipole, and everything is made of these two particles, just like Fermilab says, they can find these two particles. This is Fermilab saying that is a, a fixed particle, never changes, and that's a point particle. I agree. We see them in light. This is actually light, photons of light from a red pulsed laser. I'm going to show you this in extreme detail because I have the details to say we can split light right here, break these apart, that's called fission. If we can break these apart and when they come back together they're fusion. So it's fission, fusion and in the middle I say we have a ton of power, a ton of extra electri electrical energy basically that we can tap into very simply. But I've been excluded from this because I've I, I, I'd be honest with you, I, because I have the evidence. I was excluded the day I got out of the army because I had a theory that nobody could go against. So they destroyed me then. They tried to destroy me now. I presented this in 2015. And these are the exact... Well, let me show you who also agrees with this. Is is Fermilab. They found the same exact... Well, these are Fermilab particles. Let me show you what they say and how they want to stay with the fair, with the standard model. There's no such thing as what I'm talking about, which is dipole particles. No. These are the real things. They just never knew the dark matter was attached to the stuff that glows that we can see they call light. The dark matter has been attached. These two are attached. Nobody's ever seen it before because it's dark matter. You know, every time you see anything, they say, call, email us if you have questions. I emailed them, and I discussed this with Don Lincoln back and forth several times, and he finally said, don't talk to us anymore. We don't want to talk to you. And I said, why? I have the particles that you found. And he said, that's it. No more. <laughs> I said, whoa. And that was year, several years ago. Now, I, and we've been doing this since 2015. I've had the theory, and I've had the evidence. I show the particles. So I think I should be part of this this endeavor, but I have to have them look at electron flood theory because it replaces a standard model. Standard model doesn't work. Even here it says out of the leptons, they say all these kind of, they call it a particle zoo because they can find, when they smash these protons together, a proton is not like that and it shatters into glassy pieces. A proton is 1835 dipole electrons. Each one of them is a little magnet, just like that. All right, they glue together and they hit 1835, boop, that turns into an electron. That's called periodicity, periodicity. That is a certain quantity becomes stable. Stable, 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 like that. Now, you can have isotopes, which means there's a couple of them missing, or there's, not a, or there's a couple extras, and that, then they, they have half-lives. They either give them up or take some on to become that main, stable, really solid particle which is at the right number of, pro, of, of electrons. But this electron flood theory says these two particles that Fermilab says exist, I agree, they're glued together. They're glued together as a, as a dipole. Two of them back to back make elect, uh, photons. So that's basically an electron, but it consists of a muon and electron neutrino. And the electron neutrino burns, the muon is just a, a big heavy particle. Now, Here's what they're saying. Listen to this. Out of the standard model, they can only find, out of the leptons, the most familiar is the electron. That's the one everybody, you know, electron, static electricity, lightning, all that. It makes up the outer layer of atoms. I agree with that. They surround them, but they're, they're surrounded by the same particles that are in the core. It's just the core has enough surrounding electrons that they don't want any more to come in. So they kick them back out. They won't come in. See? I can make it so it kicks them out. Anyway, they're saying the surrounding electrons are the valence electrons that orbit a big positive core. It's not that way. They are exactly the same particles that are in the core, except the core has its stable quantity. And some more want to get in. They say, no, 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 you can't get in until we get up to the next quantity that will accept you. And that is going up the periodic chart. So hydrogen is not one proton. It's one of these balls of particles, which is 1835 or so 
dipole electrons, these particles. Back, and back to back, they are photons. Now, I have now the evidence to prove precisely what I'm saying. And I can do all of the things that Anton is asking about. We can accelerate light. We can split light. We've created sterile muons and electron showers. That's about it. i got to be honest with you. I find this kind of hysterical. It, it, the standard model can't even tell you how gravity works. In addition to the particles, standard model includes all these forces, three forces that govern the behavior of matter. These forces are electromagnetism, strong and weak nuclear force. Of course, the familiar force of gravity is currently not included in the standard model because they don't know how it works. Gravity is the attraction of the dark matter. Okay, here it is again. Don Lincoln's finishing it up here. He says, the standard model is known to be incomplete. Well, it's known not to work. It doesn't answer all the questions. It really answers nothing. However, it is a marvelous intellectual achievement. It's just a thought achievement, yes. We expect that measurements taken at particle physics laboratories, such as mine, spread across the globe will continue to improve our understanding of the universe. These new insights will be incorporated into a new and improved standard model called the dipole electron flood theory model. So it's time to look at this. I'm showing the exact same particles this same person, Don Lincoln, is talking about. And he also agrees with the fact that space is filled with quantum foam.